evidence. Welcome to audit the audit. Where we well, 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 one what only one the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers taser use, misconduct in office, and blood alcohol concentration tests, and is brought to us by M Live's channel. Be sure to check out the description guys, below and give them the credit that they well, deserve. That is on November thirteenth, guys, 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 I thought Chad was bad. Okay, until I streamed the other day and we watched a video of the girl, of the girl with the crack. Absolutely insane. The mo the, the 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 criminal apologies in chat were on 2016. Montmorency man. County Sheriff Deputy Zachary what Morrison responded to multiple that, 911 calls regarding a pickup truck being driven recklessly in Montmorency County, Michigan. He located the vehicle, which was being driven by Lieutenant Brian Filipiak of the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office while off duty. And after witnessing the truck swerving onto the shoulder and then back left over the center line, Deputy Morrison initiated a traffic stop. Lieutenant Filipiak immediately pulled his vehicle over, while Deputy Morrison stopped the cruiser and approached the driver's side window of Yo, Lieutenant Filipiak. Three. Yes. Can I see your license and registration proof? Of oh my god, this is annoying. Oh my god, stop. Okay. You got your ID? Department ID? Was that his badge? Your no one asked. The reason why Stop I'm stopping you is we got video you curb. Go up some drugs. Okay. And then when I'm following you, you're hitting the shoulder of the road. You been drinking? How many? Okay. Where are you reaching in the back for? I seen you reaching in the back. You have an open container back there? Okay, you been drinking on the way here? Do you have a firearm on you? Okay. Do you got your pistol? Are you a corrections officer or a deputy? Lieutenant? Okay. Alright, just a tight right back to you. Brian, I'm gonna have you step out of the car. I'm gonna do some field sobriety tests for you. Uh oh, I love those. Okay. Those are my favorites by far. I'm gonna ask you to step out of the vehicle. What would you like me to do? I can't. I've got multiple 911 calls about a reckless driver, plate and all matches, almost hitting vehicles. I get behind you. You're you hit the shoulder of the road twice. All right, just let me stay here. You can't. I'm gonna ask you nicely to step out of this vehicle, Brian. My hands are tied. If I let you go, I'm gonna lose my career over you. I don't want to yank you out of this vehicle. No, just let me go. I can't. We're done with that. Step out of this vehicle right now. I don't get it how I, I, don't, I, I don't get how somebody that's that's so like it's not slow he just seems kind of like uh, even though he uh, he drank he's just weird that it gets like a lieutenant or whatever the fuck yeah. Yeah. Brian, I'm asking there's, you there's not nobody not seeing anything coming like uh, uh, on his come up on his way even if he's drunk though okay no just let me go Brian you know the next thing I'm gonna go hands on with you no, and you're gonna go to jail for R and O you want that out of this vehicle right now. Do me a favor. I can't. Oh my God. I'm not losing my career over you. And I'm not losing my career either, so. I'm getting done with you. Uh, what's I'm your name again? Deputy Morrison. Morrison. Zach Morrison. Just let me. I can't. Yes, you can. You think I want to do this? Arrest a fellow cop? Uh, yes, I think you do. Why? I don't know. Just I know this over. career. I know what you go through every day. No, just let me go over. Why do you think I want to arrest a cop? We're not above the law. Throughout the course of the encounter, Lieutenant Filipiak repeatedly asked Deputy Morrison to just let him go so he can sleep it off on the side of the road. Had Deputy Morrison agreed to this proposition, he could have potentially been convicted of several criminal that's, offenses under Michigan law. Under Section 758 of the Michigan Compiled Laws, it is a misdemeanor offense for a public officer or any person holding any public trust or employment to willfully neglect to perform their legal duties. And as the Michigan Court of Appeals explained in the 2015 case of People v. Channels, quote, It is routinely recognized that a police officer has a duty to uphold and enforce the law. In the Channels decision, the court 
upheld a conviction under Section 750.478 against a police officer who failed to enforce various laws and ordinances that he observed being violated, and similarly upheld a conviction for misconduct in office, which is a common law offense that Section 750.505 of the Michigan Compiled Laws makes a felony. The Channels Court explained that, quote, At common law, misconduct in office was defined as corrupt behavior by an officer in the exercise of the duties of his office, and that, among other things, quote, an officer could be convicted of misconduct in office for failing to perform any act that the duties of the office require of the officer. Additionally, the court clarified that, quote, that not only like violations that. I like when they go to the like duties that. are indictable, but also discretionary acts performed with so an what improper is indicting? Or motive are subject to indictment, and that, quote, a corrupt intent can be shown where there is intentional or purposeful misbehavior or wrongful conduct pertaining to the requirements and duties of office by an officer. While it is unlikely that Deputy Morrison would actually be prosecuted for either of these offenses if he did not arrest Lieutenant Filipiak, it is at least arguable that doing so would violate these statutes. And, as Deputy Morrison pointed out, showing preferential treatment to an intoxicated police officer could also put his career at risk. I don't want to fight you. I'm not going to fight. You're resisting already. No, I'm not. I just want you to let me go. I can't. Out of this vehicle now. I've, no, I've, no, be it. Out of this vehicle no, now. Don't touch Brian, me. Brian, out of this vehicle no, no, now. Don't touch me. Let's, let's step out. No, you know this. Oh my god. Please don't make me crawl through here. Get no, out no, of this vehicle. I just, hey guys. Step out to the back and talk. No, 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 no. Out. No. We, we just have to. Out. Brian, go. Come on. No. You're getting the taser. Back up. No. Taser right now if you don't get out. <laughs> make your, okay. Out. Right now. Go to the front of my car. Good, then. After Lieutenant Filipiak repeatedly refuses to exit the vehicle, Deputy Morrison pulls out his taser and threatens to tase him if he does not step out of the truck. The Supreme Court has not issued a decision regarding when an officer using a taser constitutes excessive force, but as we have discussed before on ATA, it established three factors that courts should review when determining whether force is constitutionally excessive in the 1989 case of Graham v. Connor. Quote, the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively well, resisting, he's resisting or attempting yeah, to he's evade arrest by flight. However, in applying these factors, lower courts have reached differing opinions as to when a taser may be constitutionally used to gain compliance from a suspect. In the 2016 case of Armstrong versus Village of Pinehurst, the Fourth Circuit determined that officers used excessive force when using a taser on a mentally ill individual who was engaged in, quote, stationary and nonviolent resistance to being handcuffed, and that, quote, tasers are proportional force only when deployed in response to Jesus. a situation in which a reasonable officer would perceive some immediate danger that could be mitigated by using the taser. In reaching this conclusion, the court reviewed decisions from other circuits where similar uses of a taser were found to be excessive. For instance, in the 2011 case of Matos versus Agarano, the Ninth Circuit concluded that a reasonable fact finder could conclude that officers used excessive force by tasing an individual who actively resisted arrest when she, quote, refused to get out of her car when instructed to do so and stiffened her body and clutched her steering wheel to frustrate the officer's efforts to remove her from her car. The Armstrong decision what also did, what similar decisions from the 7th and 8th circuits, as well as opposing cases from the 11th and 6th circuits that, quote, distinguished permissible and impermissible tasing based on facts establishing bare non-compliance, rather than facts establishing a risk of danger. The 6th circuit, which has jurisdiction over the state of Michigan, has upheld you tasing harder. You tickled them. an individual is, <laughs> quote, <laughs> actively... Funnily enough, the tickling would actually work, though resisting arrest by physically struggling with, threatening, or disobeying officers, as the court explained in the 2012 case of Cockrell versus City of Cincinnati. Therefore, because this incident occurred in the Sixth Circuit, a court would likely conclude that Deputy Morrison would not have violated- Wait, no, wait, did, what did you have a device? It's, it has feathers, and it spins, and you put it on the neck, and it was- and it- and then they decrutch it. That would, a tickle, if he tased a, Lieutenant a Filipiak, tactical he tickle. He continued to refuse to exit the vehicle. On the other hand, if this situation had occurred in a circuit that views taser use as excessive, or in the, ear. the subject does not pose an immediate danger to anyone, a court reviewing the case would probably reach the opposite conclusion. You got your firearm on you. No, I don't. I'm patting you down. Turn around. Okay. Are you going to do the sobriety test? 
He is affirmative. Can I just pull off? No. Okay. If you're not going to do field sobriety test, turn around, place your hands in your back, you're under arrest. No, I'm not. You are under arrest. No, don't. You are under arrest. Don't resist. No. You're under arrest. No, Place your hands behind your back. No. Okay, you are placed place under arrest for suspicion of operating while intoxicated. And I already told you I would go by the side of the road and sleep it off. So. Okay, well, that's that's that, I mean, you can't, you can't do that either. No. You're already no. under arrest. Backseat my patrol car. Dude. Brian. I'm not going to fight you. Can we talk? I've tried talking. You won't talk to me. You want to sit on the side of the road. You got him? So, what do we got to talk about? Well, not much talking about. You know what happens. We're going to take you to the jail and ask for a mm -hmm. data master. And if you refuse that, we're going to get a search warrant for your blood. Take you to the hospital and get blood. Deputy Morrison informs Lieutenant Filipiak that he will be taken to jail and asked for a data master, which is the name of a type of breathalyzer device, and that if he refuses the breath test, he'll get a warrant to take him to the hospital and take his blood. While DUI laws differ between states, there are two primary types of breathalyzer tests that officers use when dealing with potentially intoxicated drivers. A roadside preliminary breath test, or Chat, PB... what if you stall to make the blood levels go down? ET and a more accurate chemical breath test that's administered at the police station, which in Michigan is the data master breath test. Under section 257.625A of the Michigan compiled laws, an officer can require that an individual take a PBT if they have reasonable suspicion to believe that they were driving while intoxicated. And the results of the PBT can then be used as the probable cause necessary to arrest okay, the driver. Okay, guys, guys individual I don't want to stop the video too to often chat, but what if you guys, you stall? You stall, you stall, and then, and then you talk, and then you stall, and then, for hours, right? And then, and then, and then, and then the, even wait more time. Yeah, you better go to the hospital, and you go, you go, ah. Dude, right? And then, and then, and then they go, dude, I think they're having a heart attack, yo. And then they take you to, to the ER, and before they take, they take blood, they, they check if you're okay, whatever, and then you go, mm, mm, and then boom, they check you for other shit, and then the other shit, and then, dude, they have to make sure you're okay, and then at the end, Okay, he's good. Take some blood. Boom. <laughs> You're good. Fuses what? to take a PBT, they're responsible for a civil infraction, but there will be no criminal charges or points on their driver's license. Once an officer has probable cause to arrest an individual for driving under the influence, either through PBT results or observed evidence of intoxication, they'll be taken to the police station, where they'll be asked to submit to a chemical test of their blood, urine, or breath. While PBTs can be refused without driver's license implications, refusing a post-arrest chemical test will result in driver's license suspension and the addition of six points to the driver's record. This distinction exists because Section 257.625C of the compiled statutes, which is known as Michigan's law of implied consent, declares that an individual who operates a vehicle on a public highway in the state is considered to have given consent to chemical tests of their blood, breath, or urine if the person is arrested for a DUI offense. If an individual refuses to submit to a post-arrest chemical test, Section 257.625A requires the officer to obtain a court order, also known as a blood test search warrant, in order to give the test. Notably, in the 2016 case of Birchfield versus North Dakota, the Supreme Court held that while the Fourth Amendment permits warrantless breath tests incident to DUI arrests because the impact of breath tests on privacy is slight, while the need for BAC testing is great, this is interesting. blood I like that. tests cannot be administered without consent or a warrant because they are significantly more intrusive. Based on the statutes and precedent, Deputy Morrison would be well within his authority to request that Lieutenant Filipiak take a post-arrest data master breath test at the station. And if he refused, Deputy Morrison could likely obtain a search warrant to have his blood drawn against his will. Fair enough, so far. Let's make a deal. Okay? Uh, no deal. What kind of deal do you want to make? A cop to a cop? That's, that's what the deal's about. A cop to a cop? Why are you putting me in that situation? Why are you putting me in that situation? Please I didn't stop. drink. Okay, no, step let's back. Talk step back. What a oh, dumbass. I'm not gonna fight, but... Have a seat. No, no deal, I'm good. Okay. Have a seat. Any other person is gonna get an R&O charge, you know this. I don't know. No. Have a seat. No. Hey, watch your head. I'm who you guys are. Do you guys realize that? Yes. Okay, then stop. I, we're done. Stay right here. No. Yes. Just let me... Brian, don't. Stop. Why are you doing this to a, a fellow cop? Why are you doing this to a fellow cop? 
After Deputy Morrison took Lieutenant Filippiak to the police station, breath tests showed that he had blood alcohol concentrations of 0.28 and 0.27, which is over three times the legal limit of 0.08. Lieutenant Filippiak was originally charged with an aggravated DUI offense under Michigan's so-called super drunk law for individuals who drive with a blood alcohol level of 0.17 or higher. Point, However, on January 27, 0.28 20... after it did, he probably left the spot. Right? You probably drove for a little bit. If all the calls came in, you probably drove for a little bit. And he stalled over there and then he went to the station. Imagine whenever he's gone to his vehicle. He probably was probably way ahead in that. 17. That's he pled fucking insane, to a dude. charge of a standard operating while intoxicated offense and was sentenced to one year of probation with a deferred jail sentence. Following the incident, the Washtenaw County Sheriff placed Lieutenant Filippiak on unpaid administrative leave while an internal investigation was conducted. When the investigation. supplies and equipment, and a number of other duties for reduced compensation. Overall, Deputy Morrison gets an A for maintaining a relatively calm and courteous demeanor throughout the what? encounter, fulfilling <laughs> is that his car? What the fuck is that? Fulfilling his duties to uphold the law and protect his community without regard to...